Hello everyone, my name is Caleb of Fabricator Gin, and over the last week I have received a huge amount of feedback on my Imperious armor from BlizzCon. Most of it was, what did you use to build this? How did you make the helmet? What kind of materials did you use to craft this, and where can I get it? So, I decided to make this video to help introduce people to the material I use called Citra. Alright. Sintra. Sintra is actually a brand name. What this is called is closed cell PVC foam, or expanded PVC foam. You can find it under the common brand names of Sintra or Comatex. And this is kind of a bastard child in between styrene and EVA foam. It exhibits a lot of the properties of both of those and a lot of unique ones of its own. It's a very cool material and uh, I'm excited that you are interested in working with it. So there's some things you'll need to start. First off, an X-Acto knife. This stuff is pretty soft and an X-Acto knife can handle most of the cutting required up to about three millimeters. After about three millimeters thick, this stuff starts to get kind of a pain. You need a bandsaw, but if you make it work, you can use this for almost everything. Number two, super glue. Super glue is the best adhesive to use for Sintra. It will actually dissolve the outermost layer of both sides when you slap it together, making a chemical weld that is much stronger than the actual material. Sets in five to 10 seconds, you can throw something together real quick with this and it will never come apart. Third thing you need, a heat gun. If you've done any sort of costuming in the past, you likely already have one or three of these. Uh, if not, there's a link in the notes below for you to, where you can pick one up. Most important thing you'll need for this is a respirator. Sintra is not Warbler. It's not even EVA foam. When you heat this stuff up, the fumes that come out of it are seriously toxic. They will wreck you. When you heat up Sintra, it releases hydrochloric acid gas. And uh, if that's not scary enough, when that go when you inhale that, it reacts with the water in your lungs and turns into hydrochloric acid, which will wreck your insides. You, you can die from it. Um, at the very minimum, you can permanently damage yourself. So please buy a decent respirator. Uh, use Heat it up in a well-ventilated area or outdoors. Make sure the respirator is at least rated for paint, fumes, and um, try not to do anything around your pets. It's dangerous stuff. All right, so Sintra. I have already sanded one side of this to make it a little bit easier to see, but it comes out of the factory kind of shiny like this. This one, this specific piece has been in my scrap bin for a year or so and is all sorts of wrecked. When you get it, it's, it's a near perfect finish. All right, a little bit of sanding and it is a perfect finish. This is very smooth stuff. Start smooth. Easy to finish a prop when it starts smooth. You don't need to coat this with anything before you paint it. You can lay paint down directly on top of this. You don't even need to prime it if you don't want to, but I always recommend priming your prop first. Um, some of the more interesting things about Sintra are its ability to deal with damage. If you can see, there's a bunch of smash marks and dents that I have in here. And you wouldn't think a plastic would dent, but this is a foam. It does dent. So you can do all sorts of cool weathering effects, you know, make huge grooves and cuts in it. You can actually take your, take your knife and make divots here and cause actual scar, scar-like battle damage in the plastic itself that comes out pretty quick and looks really cool when it's done. And like you get a nice huge gaping scar there. I love the way this stuff takes damage and that it takes damage at all. But another weird thing that you can do with this is if you were, if you were to heat this up, it's got self-healing properties. So I'm going to show you real quick what I mean by that but I am going to have to put my mask on because hydrochloric acid gas. So, if you look at these little divots, we're going to see if we can make them go away using a heat gun. Uh, 
All right, I gave it a minute or two, and now, as you can see here, kind of actually, it's kind of hard to see, but the divots are gone. You can still see where they were, but now they are perfectly flat. There is no hole there anymore. And you can fix any dents that you see, any bits like these, these would come right out with a little bit of heat forming. It just raises up, fills the gap again, returns to its closed cell form, and is great. I love that. It's a little bit self-repairing. It's harder to do when it's painted, but you can still do it when it's painted. Bashed edges, all sorts of things like that can be undone. Great. So, some other stuff you can do with this is... Uh, it's kind of hard to show on this big piece, so I'm just going to cut a piece out, which, by the way, we need to do anyway. So, it's pretty simple to cut. This is a thicker material, so it takes a couple passes, but you kind of just run your X-Acto knife over the same line a couple times, and it comes right off. All right. Now, this stuff doesn't always need to be heated to be shaped. You can actually cold bend it and have it stay the way it is. It gets a little bit tougher on the bigger pieces to do, but on small chunks like this and detail work, you can just kind of run your fingers down it like, a, like you're bending a piece of cardboard, and it will retain that shape permanently. So you can make pretty sweet little curves like this, work with, and they just come out perfect finish as it is. No need to do anything fancy. Pretty great. Um, like a foam, if you wanted to make a design inset in this, you could. You could cut your design in here. I'm just going to make some random shape. Why not? Don't care. Here it is. And then, if you were to hit that with your heat gun, which, excuse me, I'm going to mask land, these cracks will open up, just like in foam, and leave a nice deep fissure that can then be sanded flush and smooth so it's very clean and these lines will be very visible for detail work. Pretty sweet! Alright, another couple minutes of airing out and voila! This is a lot easier when you don't have to take the mask off to talk to the video. So. These opened up into these nice fissures. My camera is being terrible at focusing on it, but very clean, nice lines. They can be visible from any number of feet away, and it's actual level detailing. I ran some sandpaper over this a couple times. It made it nice and smooth, and looks pretty good. So a lot of these things are you're, you're probably used to seeing in EVA foam or even Warbler, but... This stuff is amazing. I highly recommend you give it a try. I'll be having a few more of these videos come out with uh, more tips and tricks and then a book actually on how to build a prop using entirely this material. Should uh, look out for that coming soon. And yeah, all right guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more random tips and tricks from the shop and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye-bye.